Okay, here's Amalia and Alana again. I know I talk a lot about Asian history. It's one of my interests. I can't help it. I'm interested in all history, but, like, European history is just done over and over and over again, and it's boring. Really, really boring for someone who's studied history to talk about European history. Like, so I'm going to talk about Asian history again. Uh, Alana doesn't seem to mind. So, what am I doing again? Genghis Khan or Song Dynasty? Song Dynasty. Song Dynasty. Okay. <laughs> so, get this. During the Song Dynasty in China, uh, they had a flourishing of the arts. And the Song Dynasty is split into two historical periods, Northern Song and Southern Song. And this is because... Well, this is kind of a bigger explanation. But basically, like... There are multiple Chinese ethnicities who all had kingdoms in the area around China, but the Chinese people today kind of track their history according to, like, this dynasty, then this dynasty, then this dynasty, even though there was, like, other Chinese tribes having different dynasties at the same time. So... China's really big. China's really big, yeah. It's a big... It's a big place. Like, you know, you, you there's more than there's more than enough room for multiple dynasties. So the Song Dynasty is the one that like people when they study art history like I did, they look at Song Dynasty painting, you know, and they ignore the other Chinese cultures. So there was the Song Dynasty, the Lang Chinese, and the Jin Chinese. And I believe it was the Lang Chinese that were harassing the Song Dynasty's borders. So they hired the Jin Chinese to attack these other, they called them barbarians. They hired these barbarians to attack these barbarians. And then that happened, but then the barbarian tribe that they hired, barbarian, because, you know, they weren't really barbarians. Um, took the northern half of Song China. And so they had to move their capital south. Uh, so then, after that, like, 50 years later, they're like, hmm, we didn't learn from our mistake. You know what we should do? We should hire the Mongols to take out the people who attacked us last time. So they are like, let's pay the Mongols to attack the Jin Chinese or the Lang Chinese or whoever they were. And so, guess what happened? They defeated the barbarian Chinese and then took the southern half of China because they didn't stop conquering once they were done doing what the Song Chinese told them to do. So then the Yuan Dynasty started, which was ruled by Mongols. And Kublai Khan, who you may have heard of, was the first emperor of the Yuan Dynasty in China. And he was the grandson of Genghis Khan. And he had three brothers and one cousin who were ruling the huge Mongolian Empire, like, during this time. Like, the, it's the largest contiguous empire of all time. The British Empire is technically bigger. But they had guns. And also it wasn't contiguous, which means that it was, like, spread out. You know, like, they had conquered the Philippines, they conquered... India, they kind of, you know, it wasn't like a big expanse of land that they all, that they owned completely. So, the Mongolian Empire is the largest contiguous empire, empire in history. And so, anyway, there's three grandsons of Genghis Khan who are brothers, and then one whose name is Ard Bak, who was a cousin. So, there's Manke Khan, who is the great Khan in Karakoram in Mongolia. There's Kublai Khan, his younger brother, who's ruling China. And there's Hulagu Khan, who the name Hooligan comes from. When you hear the word Hooligan, that comes from this guy's name. And Manke Khan was like, hey, Hulagu, go conquer the Middle East and take no prisoners. And so Hulagu was like, all right, I, I have no problem with that. And he took his army down and started conquering the Middle East, and the Islamic culture, who was existing there at the time, this would have been about, like, 1450 A.D. or so, they thought it was the armies of Satan, like, because they were losing so badly, and they thought the apocalypse was happening. 
So there was this, uh, this is interesting. So the Black Hand, uh, who stayed in a part of the mountains in the Muslim region, and they were a group of assassins, where the name assassin comes from, they were the Hashishem. And they just surrendered to the Mongols. They're just like, we can't fight you. We're the baddest ass fucking people in all of the Islamic culture, and we're just going to surrender. So the Mongols keep conquering, keep conquering, keep conquering, until they get to the Sinai Peninsula. This is Hulu Khan doing this. They get to the Sinai Peninsula where Egypt meets Saudi Arabia, you know? Like, you can probably imagine that part of the map. And uh, there was this dynasty that was ruling Egypt at the time, who were Muslim at the time. And the king, or the sultan, dies in battle. And his head concubine and his head general, who was a slave because their entire military cast were slaves, he called the Mamluks, they got together and they managed to rally the army and all of the nobles of Egypt and hold off the Mongols on the Sinai Peninsula. So Egypt was never conquered. The Mongols were also stopped by the Sultanate of Delhi in India, because there's those mountains in between India and the rest of Asia, and then the Sultan of Delhi was used to fighting in the mountains, and the Mongols were like, well, we ride horses and fire arrows, so how are we going to ride these fucking horses up this mountain? So they got stopped there, and then they tried to conquer Japan with boats, but then there was a freak like storm that killed all of the boats or destroyed all the boats the Mongols were on so Japan never got conquered and that's where the word kamikaze comes from which, from, which means divine wind because this divine wind prevented the Mongols from conquering Japan otherwise they would have if it hadn't been for this storm so it the kamikaze pilots in World War II are named after this divine wind that was it is like 1450 AD, like preventing the Mongols from conquering Japan. Meanwhile, Monke Khan up in Karakoram, which is a mountain range and a city in Mongolia, uh, is like, oh yeah, we're doing so good. Look how much of the map we got. We got Russia. We got the Middle East, we got, we got China, and then they started conquering Southeast Asia too, but there were some mountains in the way and they didn't quite get all the way down. And then, so they had conquered the Middle East, including, including Jerusalem, which is a big deal for Christians in Europe, and this is during the Crusades. So King Richard from England, tried, he tried to make a deal with the Mongols to marry his daughter to Hulu Khan. And then Hulu Khan was like, of course I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. No, he was not a Christian. He was lying. But they had their mother, uh, the Monke Khan, Kublai Khan, and Hulu Khan's mother had gotten them tutors from all over the world to tell them about all the different religions and agriculture and everything else that a dictator needs to know and military stuff and, you know, everything a dictator would possibly need to know. So he knew about Christianity and he tried to convince the crusaders that he was a Christian, which is super weird. Like, cause he worshiped like a random sky God from Mongolian culture, but he's like, no, I'm a Nestorian Christian. Christian. That's the kind of Christians that were in Asia, were Nestorian Christians. So it's totally fine for my daughter to marry you. Like, or, well, he was going to marry King Richard's daughter, I mean. But then eventually the Christians were like, um, I don't think you're really Christian. And then they're like, okay, we admit it, we're not Christian. And so that deal fell through. And then slowly the Mongols got acclimatized to the Islamic cultures and converted to Islam so, 
Which is weird because, like, usually when you conquer a place, you don't convert to their religion, you know. But that's the Mongols were pretty secular, so they're like, oh, hell, I like Allah, whatever. So, anyway, the Crusaders never married into the Mongolian family. Unfortunately, because that would have been a really funny story, but what are you going to do? And then I have another story that I'm going to do on the next video about Genghis Khan's descendants, but that's, that's the end of this story. Okay, end transmission.